Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce Podcast. What a jingle. What a jingle jangle that you blessed us with this morning. Thank you. Hashtag blessed. Thanks so much. You don't see that as much now. Hashtag blessed. No, I know. I'm bringing it back. I feel like I missed out on the first wave and now, you know, it's time to bring it back. I think it's reached the point now where you could definitely use it. People would people would love it. it funny. They would love yeah. it. People would really appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. I think yeah. so. I yeah. think I I think you could probably do that with a bunch of stuff that people have forgotten. You know, I think you can always It's always funny to bring up a slightly old meme hashtag. Oh yeah. Thing. I as think long, I'm as long really as it's funny. old enough, you know, it has to have passed yeah. from the collective consciousness and into it's a, do you know what it's only okay books. if i do it though if somebody else does it <laughs> fuck them but yeah. if i'm doing it it's acceptable if you're trying I'm... to steal this idea from sips bear in mind it only works with him in it it doesn't yes. work with you in it right exactly don't, don't try and steal it you will fail exactly. and you'll Timing make both is everything of you, both of you will look foolish you'll yes. both have it ex- we'll you will both be have eggs on our face cringe yeah. Um, yes. Not oh. and not hashtag blessed at all. You'll be like a, the what's the opposite of being blessed? Damned. Cursed. Yeah, indeed. That's <laughs> hashtag, hashtag cursed. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yeah. I, I like that. Uh, a busy week for you, Sips. Uh, you have been in the kitchen the entire fucking week, apparently. Oh my god, Good man! Lord. I have been absolutely hammering plate up like there's no tomorrow, but. I've been having a lot of fun. It's nice to uh, it's nice to be uh, really into a game, you know. Like you get you get those you get those times where you're just like, I like the games I'm playing, but like I could take them or leave them. But man, played up has uh, has absolutely captivated me. Wow, like it sucks uh, you in. It's enchanting. Yeah, oh, it's kind of it's kind of blown up, hasn't it? Like, like yeah, yeah. I yeah. think uh, I think people. I, I think especially if you can play it with like. Uh, a person or a group of, of people that mm-hmm. you work well with it is very satisfying. It's a, it's a lot of fun and quite hard too, surprisingly. Yeah, you know, with, like uh, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to overcooked, which it gets compared to a lot mm. naturally. Overcooked is something that you can just kind of complete and you're done. But with, with played up, it's it kind of goes into like an endless mode after you five star your restaurant, mm. which gets harder and harder and harder. So it's kind of fun to to try to maximize everything to to push as far as you can into the endless mode um, where it just gets insane. But it's really fun. It's really, really fun. I've I enjoyed saw, it a lot. I saw you and Hafu. Well, we've had you on in the office, um, Sips. You and you don't know this, but we've got a big TV in the middle of the office and we've just had you and Hafu on it. And there was one playthrough that I, I think I went home at like, you know, late at night and you were still going. And then I came back the next morning did like a full day of recording and in the afternoon you guys were still doing the same run or something. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it was, was like, like we got to like overtime day 21 or something. But like it was insane cuz like when you start the game you're like the the first day you get six customers or something, right? By day 21 we were we were we were we were getting like 75 customers or something. Like mm. it was just insane. It was really hard to balance and then we lost, but it was it was good. It's been really fun. So Yeah, yeah. I I'm I'm glad to see people enjoying it because it's it's it is a real fun game. We've had um, I I dragged Simon's computer across the office and set it up on one of the other TVs and um, and we just sat around all night drinking and playing play up. It was a really good evening and yeah, I think you, you that was the night when you like and I think you just finished a twelve hour play up stream and you were like you sent me a message saying do you want to play and I was like oh, <laughs> fucking God. it's like. Well, this I mean, is that, too deep, Hap was in a completely different time deep. zone to me as well. So she's just she's existing on these like really degenerate hours now, where she's I like, know, like she's overnight. waking up at like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, just Jesus. so that we can play, just to like, play, to play up. Yeah, just to fit in with like my my like schedule and stuff. It's pretty, it's nice, but like I'm also concerning as well because obviously yeah. you don't want somebody to be you know their 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 physical and mental health being affected, but. I don't yeah. know. It's one of those things, right? It's not, I, I feel like it's a game that you you'll will binge on for a few weeks and then move on, sort of thing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like you know, games, you I just think... enjoy it while it's fun, and and there you go. Like that's that's kind of like the the essence of gaming, isn't it? It's just those 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 sort of like getting into something, really liking it, binging through it, and then getting to the point where you're like, yeah, cool, I'm done. I, I can move on to something else now mm. or whatever. I like that. Totally. There's a few yeah. other sort of multiplayer games that are. 
that are fun to hang it. It's just, I don't know, it's just nice to have a multiplayer game for once. Like, everyone was playing Stray or everyone was playing, I don't know, whatever the hot new thing was that was single player. Was it Dota? And that's, all, that's all good. At any point? Final. It's never Dota. It's, it's, when is Dota going to be the hot game again? It's a, it, but it's an older, it's an older competitive game, right? Like We it, pick it's... up Dota every time there's a TI for I mean, to yeah. be fair as well, I am coming down today to do Dota the next two days in the Ox. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. when is, when is, uh, when is it going to be the time when everybody's like, you guys heard of this game Dota? And it's something Well, it'll be, it'll be uh, just a couple of days after what do you uh, mean? the annual um, it's like a international ends. game. Ends. Everybody gets like, back into it, right? You guys ever heard of this game called War Thunder? It's totally blowing up, dude. <laughs> it's, like, it's a fucking ancient game. Like, I'm, I'm just waiting when they, for when our they bring time. out Dota 3, let me fucking our know. Time you come. have your time once a year, every what summer. What are you talking about? You've There's had a your resurgent. time. I every want us to be the biggest game on Twitch just once. So and not a, a TI. That's all I'm saying. I want people to realize it's a great game and fucking play it and stop stop playing uh, the, its Played rivals. Up. No, stop play having up is a not good a time. rival. Play up is a direct competitor. Have a bad time. I'm saying the- get rid of League. I want League to die. I want Dota to be top. Get Dota to the top. Fuck the okay. rest. Okay. Well, it's good that you've got your. I think. There. I think honestly, the uh, the only difference is I think League <laughs> is just marketed better than than Dota. I actually think Dota is a, a better game. Like, well, uh, I, I mean, Dota has like four but... fucking developers. League has yes. like two thousand staff. You know, I mean, Dota yeah. is like managed by fucking one guy in his pants uh, yeah uh, it really is i love that trip to seattle to valve was hilarious it was, it was like absolutely holy shit mad. we're actually gonna meet the guys who work on dota and it was like an office the size of my garage it was like a cubicle the size of my garage with four people in it it's like yeah. oh hey cool you guys work on dota yeah that's it like it was just, that was the team it was so yeah. good yeah and, the, and they were building like a lego star destroyer that's what they were yeah, building yeah. that's yeah, what they, they weren't were working really on fucking busy. dota that's for goddamn sure <laughs> Anyway, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, saying as a. I'm sorry. I'm, <laughs> if you, I'm not they, associated with this podcast in any way. They just, they just need to put in what they're getting out. I think that's the funny thing about Valve is that you know they're obviously making billions from Dota. No. Why don't they put some of that back in? To they're Dota? making billions from Steam, homie. That's yeah, it. Yeah, they make billions from Steam. Dota, Dota they're making makes billions decent from money. Dota. No, they're not making billions. They're making great money from Dota. For a game that's ten years old, they make like five bucks a month or something. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it's not much. You're right. It's, it's, not, it's not. They're just breaking even most of the time. They make um, a lot listen, of money from uh, the battle pass. Anyway, sorry. Go on. <laughs> listen, I wanted to uh, to come back to something we we spoke about last week because I watched the Woodstock '99 train wreck oh, documentary yeah, God, after almighty. you recommending it, and uh, it was good. I, I I thought it was it was good. It, it made me go off and read more uh, about the whole thing. I didn't realize like how sort of you know, uh, dire the whole thing was. I remember it happening. Like, I, I remember hearing about it and stuff, but I, I didn't realize that it was like, you know, such a mess and stuff. But man, fuck me. The 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 part where uh, the, in, in the rave hangar where the van was, was going through during yeah. Fat Boys... Holy shit, that is that is the worst story like I think I've ever heard. Like when they were talking about what was happening yeah, in the van yeah. and stuff like that. Fuck me, man. Like you just, uh, it's the worst. I just hate shit like that. Like it just, it, it's almost like, uh, just like the whole traumatized story me a is bit. mental yeah. that people could just tr- casually drive a van yeah. with a woman who'd been sexual assaulted in the back of it into uh, the middle it's of just, a rain. It's unfucking believable, man. Like it's uh, uh, staggering that, I mean, I don't know how many, um, how many went like unreported but like the 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 actual 99.9 percent i guarantee yeah the the statistics are are insane because it's like you see that and you're like holy shit like so many people must have died that weekend no it's like two people did and you just think, I, mean, How I, I, I think that the craziest like, thing to me is like um, the the women saying no that you died, were just getting. Did they? No, I didn't think anyone died. No I one think died. died. Um, no, yeah, there was like two people who died. One guy collapsed from I think heat exhaustion. He was in his forties and oh, okay. uh, and died. They didn't mention that. And and, and that. another guy overdosed. He he oh, overdosed. Okay had heat exhaustion and then eventually oh, died wow. of hypothermia while he oh, was wow. in a coma from um, from complications doing uh, owing to overdosing on drugs and uh, and like complications with obesity as well I mean well, he, he so I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna he was put, only a kid I'm not gonna put those deaths necessarily at the feet of the Woodstock 99 organizers. no no I mean that was that that I think that very much was people going going hard and yeah you know but the rest of it I mean the the water 
being contaminated, the lack oh, of available man. drinking water. When that, when that woman was describing trench mouth, fuck yeah. me. <laughs> Just unbelievable. Oh, but the, so the, the thing is, if you oh, think I'm about it. i you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it that a was, lot. That the, was uh, 1999. There, had, yeah. there was no sort of... Uh, me Too was 20 years away, right? Yeah. The idea of women speaking out, at just being grabbed, and other men policing other men and saying, what the fuck are you doing? That didn't happen back then. If, you yeah. know, dudes were just grabbing these women, like, that was it. And when the women were crowd surfing, they were just getting groped the whole time. God knows yeah. how many sexual assaults took place. I, I would say if you were a woman at that event and you didn't get sexually assaulted, that that in itself is uh, is a standout statistic because holy shit, what a bunch of perverts! Yeah, oh, it's it's, it's crazy. There's so many people. The the I, I was wondering because you know they were all they were so um they they talked about you know being profitable and and budget cuts and stuff so often and you think I think over the week the weekend that it took place they saw about four hundred thousand people come through right uh, who all would have paid like what 150 bucks per ticket yeah it's crazy so where the fuck was all their money going but then you think of the lineup they had for the weekend yeah yeah. it's like i guess i guess that's where it all went you're not gonna get corn limp biscuit metallica the red hot chili like these were all like the big bands of, right of that of that uh, era right and, and of uh, course th- fucking bush like we forgot about bush what a shit band i fucking bush. hated bush <laughs> yeah, yeah, out bush. comes what is it gavin Swallow. ross or whatever his name is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Man, he, he, he was married to gwen stefani right yeah and fucking cheated on her with a nanny <laughs> what who the fuck does this gwen stefani what are you doing like come on <laughs> What are you thinking, Bush? Bush Gavin Rossdale from Bush? Like, what? What the hell is wrong with you? It's it's crazy, anyway. But yeah, no, he was. I, I love the I love the bit where he had to go on stage with Bush right after corn like yeah the, the that was whole, so good <laughs> the audience was just amped to the fucking max and then how he comes without a shirt on swallow <laughs> like it's just <laughs> what made me laugh was oh, they said man. gavin did a really good job of calming down the crowd i'm thinking no they're just not a hype band and yeah. everybody there was like oh yeah it's oh it's bush like yeah it just, it just that's, sucks that's it. all the yeah, energy it wasn't out of everyone, some clever like gavin was vampire. like i've read the room here and i must calm these people i think people just didn't give a shit you well, don't hear they- Bush played on their fucking radio anymore, dude, ever. No, of course they not. They disappeared. Um, yeah, yeah. They're still together, apparently, but I don't Fuck know what they're even shit. doing. Dog yeah, shit. yeah. But they had some some weird... So the whole lineup was... Uh, like, we, we spoke about this last week when we said it was a lot of new metal, which was at the time huge, right? Like, yeah. it, it, it just really blew up. But the, almost the whole lineup was these new metal bands, right? But then uh, interwoven in there was like... Willie Nelson, yeah, Jewel, Jewel. Cheryl Crow. I know, like, yeah. Uh, it and and even Bush to some extent. I mean, you know, like the, these these were like much slower paced, yeah, yeah, bands, right? Um, and I, I just feel like, but like a lot of the problems they they would have had was was the lineup was was very specific, yeah. But then thinking about like music in the '90s as well, you went from like early '90s. Kind of like uh, moody, angry music, but slower to mid to late 90s, a lot faster, but very angry, very aggressive very music, angry. Yeah. right? Like, uh, like the, I'd say the 90s just generally was very, uh, very angry decade, wasn't it, for music? Like you had- I get, the- Yeah, the music was, but oddly enough, I think it was a pretty chill decade. Um, it was, not in, bad, yeah. Like- uh, I mean, when, when I think back to, to the 90s, I don't think about, I mean, obviously- we, I'm just talking about UK centric here, but uh, yeah, you know, it was like it wasn't it wasn't that bad. It didn't feel like uh, like nowadays where everything seems fucking insane. It, uh, the other the I other was thing younger, that I, so maybe a lot of it I, I missed. Yeah, the, the another thing that struck me that I thought was was kind of interesting was um, the people speaking about the kids and stuff that were at Woodstock 99 and the way that they were behaving and how appalled they were of all this stuff going on and stuff. And it wasn't anything like Woodstock in in 69, you know, that was, you know, peace and love and stuff. But 
the kids who are at Woodstock 99 are the product of people yeah. who would have been at Woodstock 69. So you created these people. Like, what the fuck are you? What have <laughs> you done? See. You know what I mean? Like, I, I do, yeah, I, peace I do and love. That. You yeah, created yeah. like the angriest generation of <laughs> yeah, kids yeah, yeah. and sent yeah. them off to Woodstock 99 30 years later. And, and they fucking trashed the place. Like, what the what what have you done? Like, I, it's, it's you. It's down to you. They it's, were almost thinking like, you know, how, how do we get our kids to be as chill as us? Because we're really chill and they cool. weren't <laughs> they had no chill like they were really just fucking destroying the place in the end you know what well, I think understandably the issue, there are two as well issues like, they were treated like animals it was crazy there, for, yeah first of all you you spent several days winding this crowd up because if the music is making them angry which it does normally that's just a release yeah but the problem here is there were things for them to be legitimately upset about Oh, so yeah. they sort of rebelled at the end. So that that was the, the my biggest takeaway was that the people acted like fucking animals, but they were also treated like animals. And it was In just the first that, place, that yeah. perfect storm. It was a perfect yeah. storm. Um, and the, the organizer, that guy, the, the guy with the curly hair, the organizer, he yeah. had the most punchable fucking face. Oh, either, he did. Either, yeah. He just had that sort of weird he had that smirk, sh- shit eating grin all the time. Just all didn't he? the time. Yeah. Fuck off, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah, he was just a callous <laughs> motherfucker. Dude didn't give a yeah. shit. Man, if I uh, go somewhere and they're charging uh, ten bucks for a burrito, I'm trashing the place as well. I'm just saying. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's too much. It's stupid. Uh, like four bucks for a bottle of water. I mean, uh, and oh, you yeah. and you paid 150 bucks to go there in the first place. There's shit everywhere. There's garbage all over the place. Like, Even oh, now, man, it just looked I like mean, hell. Every time a new episode started, I was just like, "Fuck me, that's got to be hell." <laughs> it, like you're standing in a field filled with garbage oh, and, and shit, shit and smelly in, people in blazing heat. And you, I mean, you grew up in in New York. You you grew up on that side of the world. The summers are so fucking hot with the humidity brutal. and stuff brutal. too. They're brutal, right? Yeah, man. I don't like. I, it's it it's staggering that not more people were killed, yeah. assaulted, like everything. But I, again, I think a lot of it went unreported because they seem to be very, very aware of the bad pub- publicity yeah. and probably also, paid a lot tell? of money to ch- to shut people up. Like, who are you well. going to tell? Those security guards were just like kids. They rounded up at the mall. Yeah, like and like, and the yeah. the wild thing is too. I mean, cell phones weren't in circulation then right you know it wasn't you couldn't just film it yourself you, and you couldn't just phone somebody to say this has happened you couldn't right. you, like it was it was kind of harder to get hold of like you know emergency services whatever right yeah, like you had to find a pay phone or, or an office that had a phone or something it was you know what i did think uh whenever i think back to the 60s and all the footage you see of the police turning up and cracking some hippie heads right that was a big thing they turn up with their big sticks and yeah. just start smacking these poor kids. When the police finally got called on Woodstock 99, I wonder how many of the old, the old guard who'd cracked hippie heads were like, my time's come again. Come on, butterfly. That's his nickname for his, his truncheon. We got, <laughs> we got hippies to hit. And they, out they go. Big fat old cops just, Rah, feels like old times, smacking oh, some hippie man. on the head. That's Probably. what they. That's what they were praying for it to kick off. Probably, yeah. It was a. It was a. It was a interesting documentary. I like watching stuff like that, like uh, especially like music documentaries and and whatever. But yeah, no, it was an interesting one. Good, yeah. Good shout. I'm glad I watched it. My uh, also, I while well, I went on like a bit of a bender, I watched two other music documentaries because uh, over the weekend the baby just had this monster nap on my lap. Mm. Uh, the kids were just like playing outside and stuff, so I was like, whatever. I'll just watch some documentaries, I guess. I watched uh, an ABBA documentary, which was really good. (laughs) Good lord, man. (laughs) No, it was good. And I watched a Kate Bush documentary as well. Hell yeah. Which was really good. Yeah, she's uh, really, really interesting. And the documentary was uh, excellent as well. I watched them both on, I think, BBC4, the iPlayer. They got so much shit on there, man. It's crazy. Like, it's just, uh, if you're ever, like, stuck for something to watch, BBC Two and BBC Four's, like, uh, content archive is insane. There's so much stuff to watch that you wouldn't have seen because it was just on TV at some odd time that you never realized or whatever, you know? Mm. Kate Bush. Well, she obviously got chucked back into fame with the old Stranger Things soundtrack recently, right? Yeah, but- yeah. But she um, she just, she just um, retreated from the limelight for about 15 years like she i think her mother died she broke up with her long-term partner and then got together with uh the guitarist of her band uh left london moved out to the countryside and just 
just didn't do anything. She just, just like chilled. she was still working on music and stuff. She had a she had a uh, a child, and she just decided I'm just gonna raise my ma- raise my child and take my time and do whatever. And then 15 years later, she just came back with uh, like a new double album, and people were like, "Oh, great, she's back." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, it's, a, it's very a, low key, very low, like yeah, that. very low key. But like, um, you know, almost like a like a recluse sort of thing. But like, but she, you know, I'm fine some with that. some very famous. Friends who speak highly of her as well, like in the documentary, you had like Elton John and all the all these people who were were just like, yeah, you know, like we we kept saying to her, you should come back and record music or whatever, but she was just like, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just doing my thing, I'm just enjoying my life or whatever, and I I, I think it's I think she just had such a like, um, you know, like sometimes when 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 musicians, artists, celebrities, like they get they get really big and they just end up being like. Uh, really eccentric like in the in the wrong ways sort of thing i don't mm. know she just seemed like a, a like a lot more human the fact that she could just make this reasonable decision about her life and kind of stick to it and not be controlled by what she thought people expected of her and stuff like that you know what i mean i think it's really healthy i yeah. think that people when they've had this big success and they're set for life you know and they're very comfortable they don't need to keep pushing yeah and burn out they don't need to keep going and keep working and keep yeah. driving themselves mad mm. i mean I, I feel like that's a little bit like what happened with anthony bourdain you know he couldn't ever shut off his desire to keep doing more and more and seeing more places and doing more things like he was very he struggled to settle down and yeah. appreciate what he had i guess appreciate that he was a success and that he could take time to just relax and not work and not he 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 had such an addictive personality though right where he was yeah he went from drugs to working in a kitchen to making these tv shows to like being obsessive with with one project after the next and i think a friend of mine went out with him uh <clears throat> not a, as in a, on a date but um to a nightclub um <laughs> and they went like super late and bourdain was like Let's fucking go. Like, I'll, I'll get the full story and I'll tell it on a later podcast if I can. But it was essentially my mate, who was a young lad, was was absolutely fucking in awe of just how much Bourdain could put away, his stamina, his energy. Just, the dude was just like a machine. Yeah. Um, and I think, obviously, that's not normal to be like that at that age. And I think it's just Yeah, because he was an older guy, right? Yeah, like... but to be constantly looking for that buzz... Uh, you know, he needed I, I, he needed yeah. something. I think a lot something. of people are just. I mean, he's an extreme version, but I think a lot of people are the same. They they can't turn it off. Mm. You know, they 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 feel like they have to just keep going and keep going, even though this is you see it with millionaires and billionaires and these people who have made them their themselves. You know, yeah. and yet they, they won't don't slow ever, down. Yeah, they, they won't keep ever going. let go, um, yeah. or even like take a back seat. You know, so and it's and it's weird that Kate Bush and that. That comedian who was who took that I can't remember what his name was. He was in um, was in Ghostbusters and stuff. He was quite famous. Um, who, who, who took no? He took the time off. He had a family and sort of disappeared. Oh, um, Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Yeah. He, he, um, yeah. He went off and uh, I think he quit showbiz, and he went off. Uh, did he do a country music album? I believe. Let me check. I, uh, Rick Moranis is an interesting guy because he was started off with Second City and all that stuff in um, yeah. Canada, but then, yeah, he was yeah, in he, Little Shop of uh, Horrors, right? Yeah, Rick I mean, if you look at his career in the '80s, he was in Ghostbusters, Brewster's, Mill- Brewster's Millions, Little Shop of Horrors, Spaceballs, Ghostbusters Two, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, Parenthood, L.A. Story, Honey I Blew Up the Kid. Then yeah. he was in The Flintstones. You know, let's say about oh, that. Of course, yeah. Then yeah. Honey I Shrunk the Audience, which I didn't realize was that that's a ride. That's a 4D film in Disney. And then uh, Honey yeah, We Shrunk Ourselves, really which is a 1997. And then nothing, basically for the rest of his career, just did some voiceover stuff. And um, I think he just kind of stopped. He just decided, you know what? No, he I'm must done. have been absolutely no, no, no. minted it's a by family. that family. He 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 took time off to raise his kids, and he just didn't want to be in the world. I think he just wanted to to take some time out. Look, yeah, I'm a single parent, and I just found it was too difficult to manage to raise my kids and do the traveling involved in making movies. So I took a little bit of a break, and a little bit of a break turned into a longer break. And then I found that I really didn't miss it. All right. Well, yeah. here's another thing. His wife did die. Um, well, I mean, so yeah, that's... they had two children. So he slowly left the public life to, to look after them. So that was more. It, it wasn't. Man, I did not know that about Rick Moranis. That's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, he Poor just kind of he just kind of stopped. But um, yeah, yeah, interesting. Uh, I, I I guess he had uh, 
a pretty great uh, career. I mean, he was certainly he was in all kinds of big movies and would have and like he's like uh, you know Saturday Night Live and um, Second City and all that kind of stuff. So you don't hear about it very often that people just stop to um, to raise like I I know like. Um... Like John Lennon kind of took a couple of years off to raise um, his son, uh, but I don't know. I don't know if he actually stopped writing music at the time or anything. But like you know, he, yeah. he was just. This is like post Beatles and stuff. But um, that's another kind of like um, you know example Julian, of somebody. I've told you to put your clothes away in the bedroom, Julian. <laughs> Why have, how many times have I got to tell you, Julian, to tidy up your room? Julian, uh, I, I think I could write a song about that. Tidy your room, Julian. Tidy your room. All you've got to do is tidy. <laughs> oh man! Um, but Who yeah, hasn't you know flushed the toilet? Why is the toilet unflushed, Julian? It wasn't me. I've if been in the brown, studio. Flush it down. <laughs> Before we continue, using the internet without ExpressVPN, it's like leaving your keys in your car while you run into the petrol station oh my God. for a pack it, of crisps. It's like leaving your keys in your car and then the car accidentally putting itself into gear and driving down the road by itself. And all you can do to stop it is shoot a gun at it, uh, hitting the trunk and then causing it to explode. That's it's right. like leaving your keys in your car and instead of the car being outright stolen, a group of strangers you've never met go over every inch of your car, take notes of all the little details, all everything that they can find in the vehicle, they make notes of it and sell it to other people yeah. so they can advertise you about what a filthy, dirty car you And want. also a family of <laughs> raccoons decided to breed and shit in there, Also too. the raccoons, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so please use ExpressVPN. You can secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Triforce. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Triforce. You can get an extra three months free uh, and, you know, keep your, keep your car safe. Keep your online take browsing care, safe. Take care of your car, for goodness Jesus sake. Jesus Christ, people. On with the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nelly Furtado took some time off to Thank either... God. Either raise kids or... I feel like I Send heard that she Mars? works... That would she's be like, a, it's like a school teacher now or something. Like, But I think she's not... She's she. I, I, I don't think she's doing music stuff anymore or maybe she is still but she's got like a just like a normal job too or something i don't know i need to look it up but she i think it's a barista yeah sure no i mean whatever like, I, I just like this I, li- I like this this attitude towards get because you, you that it's so easy to just get washed down the river of everyone telling you what to do and doing the normal thing every yeah. day and like it's i just like the the idea anyway I rick too, moranis yeah. i heard was coming back um because they're doing a, a disney plus um, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids called Shrunk. Of course, it yes. all has to be like one word re- now. Rebooted. Um, yeah, people can't deal with a title that's too descriptive. I think yeah. it's either overly descriptive, or it's just a single. Where are word. you going to go with that title, though? They've done it. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but then I made them bigger again, and now they've shrunk again <laughs> twice. Like, yeah, how long is the movie title going to be? I think it's I good that they know, just shortened it. I want to know what I'm getting. You know, it's a, yeah. It's a, you go in, if the movie is called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you're like, I know exactly what this is going to be. If it's called Shrunk, well, that could honey, be anything. Honey, I fucked up big time. <laughs> honey, I've done it again. <laughs> honey, the uh, children are much smaller than they used to be. Oh, man. Those are great movies, though. And Honey, I Shrunk the Audience, uh, I saw as a kid at, uh, I think it was MGM Studios. What was MGM Studios, which is now, I think, just Disney Studios in uh, at, uh, at Disney World in Florida. Yeah. And they also had it at the uh, one in France. And uh, I've, I've taken my son on it, and he liked it, too. He'd watch the movie. We had, mm. we had like, uh, the movie... And then when we went to Disney, he saw that. So it was like a good sort of like, oh, I know this. And and he liked it. But there was all, it was all like in, in 3D. You had to put the glasses on, stuff like, mm. you know, flew out of the screen at you and stuff. And, and then you're uh, in like a roller coastery thing as well where you bounce around, are you? So it's like that's it's not No, it wasn't so or... much roller coastery, but the, the seats themselves had um, – these like little air tubes under them. So there's one part oh. where like he spills a crate of rats and the rats run out of the screen towards you 
uh, like as if they're going to go into like the audience, right? And then these mm -hmm. little tubes start wiggling around behind your feet. So you, it feels like rat tails on uh, the back of your feet. So okay. it's like, like little prop things as well. There's like oh. a point where I think the dog sneezes and they spray like uh, misty water from like the <laughs> ceiling on you and shit like that, sure. you know? It's like a, like a, like an immersive experience. Mm. It, yeah. yeah so it's good for kids, right? They love well, that you, shit. You know yeah. what wasn't an immersive experience? I watched the movie Moonfall. Oh, I um, saw your tweets, yeah. Yeah. My god, what a piece <laughs> okay. of shit. Don't watch it. I thought this would be a fun goofy shitty disaster movie. You it's tend to watch awful. some some shitty movies. You've like, got to uh, look at these things. I if you look at it, I watched a lot of good movies. But I also like to watch some bad movies. I like to balance it out because yeah. sometimes a movie that's been very badly reviewed is actually really good. Sometimes. And sometimes a really good movie that, that everybody loves, you don't enjoy at all. So nah, you can't true, you yeah. can't be too dismissive. And I'm no. also fascinated to see bad movies. Like I, I really am. They're fascinating. Budget of 140 million for Moonfall. Um and it's 140 just, million. Yeah. Yeah. God, they should have just given me that money. I know. It, I could have retreated from the limelight. It is mad. <laughs> <laughs> to well, the moon. I wish yeah, Roland yeah. Emmerich Anywhere. would retreat from the, the limelight because he needs to stop making movies. It's just abysmal. It's it's so bad, it's not even funny, really. Yeah, that's another thing, right? So, yeah. like, why is it so Kate Bush retreats from the limelight. Nobody wants her to because she's actually good. Like, right. Why not then fucking Michael Bay retreat to the yeah. from the limelight or something? I'd you like, know, like Zack Snyder, Michael Bay, <laughs> Roland Emmerich, get out of the fucking limelight. Get out Go. of the limelight. Just stop hogging the Take limelight. Take a fucking break. <laughs> Have a get day out. off. Fuck off. You've ruined the limelight. Yeah. It's Colonel yeah. Brown. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's the... Uh, <laughs> it's going what's the, th the limelight's <laughs> turning brown, mom. <laughs> what's, 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 what's wrong, wrong with, with it? The, what's wrong with it? So... Yeah. It's the setup is really poor. Like it's it's like he's seen a bunch of other movies and then tried to stick them in. So there's a kind of uh, Mark Kermo does a really good review of this. If you I, I watched the movie and then people said you should watch Mark Kermo's review. And I did. And I was like, the problem with Kermo's review is and bear in mind, Mark Kermo loves the Twilight movies. All right. So let's oh. take Mark Kermo's Wait, reviews. Twilight with a pinch is of the, salt. Um, the teen vampire yeah, thing, right? He's a yeah. big fan, legitimately. Like there's a right. bunch of things that Mark Kermo is like, he's a film critic, so he's never going to just be a normal person. Yeah. He's always going to have some weirdo take because that's how you get column inches. And that's a nice way to, to make people think, wow, isn't he interesting? But, but no, um, Twilight sucks. Moonfall sucks. They can both suck. Both things suck. Uh, and we don't need to be cute about it. So I find that kind of annoying. Th this is a bad film because the characters Mark don't Kermo make called sense. called the film radioactively dumb. Right, but he also my said... My turned to sewage. I had so much... I was grinning from <laughs> ear to ear. Is what he, how he said. Dumb. Yeah, it is really bad. I mean, there's a scene... There's scenes oh where God, they man. just... The dialogue is just... You, you just think, did was this the first draft? of the script. Like, I think a lot of the time when it's that stupid, no one's read it and thought, does this make sense? Is this even logical? Is this in any way adhering to science? Even just a little bit. So, for example, the moon is off course because it's some aliens got inside it and is digging a hole and, like, <laughs> pushing, I think, the Earth towards the... the moon towards the Earth or something. Uh, sure. Now, the moon is getting closer and it sucks all the water up right. from the surface of the Earth, so it's just hanging there. Uh, which is ridiculous. Uh, I don't think that, <laughs> that that would happen. Um, and then they say, if we can get this alien out of there, uh, the moon should just return to its original course. Halle Berry says that line. Wow. And I'm like, why? Why would it do that? <laughs> You've knocked it off course. It's now off course. It's not going to go back to what it was doing before just because... Oh. You've changed its orbital path. It's now been slowed down or sped up. If you speed it up, it's going to go further away. You slow it down, it's going to come closer. You can't speed up and slow down the moon, Earth. We don't have it in us, all right? It's beyond us. We're sending <sighs> space shuttles up there, which is another thing. The space shuttles were decommissioned. Why are there still space shuttles in this movie? And there were these, these other weird things popping up. It just makes no sense. And then the guy who was his mate, Jon Snow's mate in Game of Thrones, he was the one who said, oh, John, I, yeah, I don't know about that, John. The sort of panicky Mr. Mannering one uh, oh, who could Sam have been Dad's on it. Yeah, Sam Tarly, him. He's like a, a a conspiracy theorist who thinks the moon is a megastructure, and for some reason they fucking believe him, and he just oh. turns up at NASA and they're like, oh, yes, you're in charge now. Like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> just watch it. It's so bad. Wow, this is horrendous. I would I would love to, to be on set 
when they're filming some of these incredibly dumb scenes and just see, is it just a, I kind of think it's just people doing their jobs worth, you know, like, like people who've turned up to work and they've got this thing to, to film and everyone's there just to get paid and leave, you know? Yeah. yeah. And there's no passion. There's no thought. Like, like you said about the space shuttles, it's like they're stuck in the, the 80s, you know? So, so there is it one would thing. would not I, be space I, shuttles down. They, they don't. They're not they used don't, for this but sort of I stuff. will say, I'm pretty sure that the scene with the space shuttle is at the start of the movie, and it's meant to be 10 years later or something that we then come back down to, to present. So I might be wrong about that, but I don't think we'll be using them in 2012 either. Um, I, so either way, it felt weird to see a space shuttle. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think we've used them for some time. Yeah, the last flight was 2011. Okay, so that, it could, that could have been the last flight. Indeed. Right, I see. But yeah, it was weird. They just didn't believe him. When he says they got attacked by aliens, they're like, solar flare. And th there's no, like, why would they throw him under the bus like that? Like, as, as usual, they need a bad guy. And apparently the people that run NASA are evil, according to Roland Emmerich. Like, they're just idiots. And it's up to plucky, sacked, drunk astronaut Patrick Wilson to fucking turn up and save the day. No, I'm pretty sure it'd be a team effort, as everything is at NASA. <laughs> Ridiculous. And Halle sack, Berry in another sack stinker. drunk former professional is such a a, a, a movie thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they love it. Such he, come, a movie he comes thing. back to sort it out. Like, you nobody could tell else that that guy would be a massive cunt. You know, he'd probably <laughs> yeah. like, have beaten his wife. He'd probably be a fucking a miserable shit. I would hate that guy. But somehow he's got a heart of gold. Yeah. And, you know, that's the American way, isn't it? You know, it's, you can it's be... that lousy, nasty bureaucracy that got him sacked. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, don't you think it's weird? Here's a thing that is such a movie trope and if you watch there's so many films that this is the case once you notice it it's hard to unsee how do you set the scene for this guy's kind of a fuck up he lives alone his apartment's a mess he wakes up and opens his fridge and there's just a beer in there and of course he just bang opens a beer smokes a cigarette and they're like where are you Mc mcclulloch we need yeah, you it's just rigs from lethal weapon pretty right. much but, it's that then, character they, that then, they, they obviously things. have to show he's a nice guy. So what they do is they have him have a lovely dog, which is in immaculate condition. Of course. He opens a cupboard and it's full of dog food because he cares for his dog. He gets a sparkling clean plate out, you know, gives him his dog food. You know, obviously everywhere else is an absolute shithole. Right. Um, he's, he's you, know, a, you have you to know. show that you care and you look after and his And he has a, dog. probably a motorcycle or a very cool car. Uh, and, uh, you know, his, his place is just a fucking dump. This guy, yeah. in reality, would turn up to work stinking of booze and B.O., his dog would be a mess because I don't think he would ever bother taking the time to brush him or clean him or fucking walk him. When's he walking the dog? When is this character taking his dog for a walk? Never. Never. No. Riggs isn't walking the dog. You don't see him walking the dog on a lead. No, up he's too busy beach. fighting crime in LA. He doesn't have time to walk the dog. Exactly. Come on. Or, or sleeping it off, sleeping off a massive hangover. So I just think it's ridiculous. It's su such a stereotype. I think John Belushi, not John Belushi, what was his brother? Was his brother James Belushi? Yeah. made a movie K-9. I think he plays yes, the exact, K9, same, yeah. exact same character in that. They love it. They it love was it. a the, popular the type of character up. in 80s and 90s movies. And maybe still. I don't know. I don't watch as many I'm movies sure as I is. used to. Well, but yeah. According, apparently, according to Moonfall, it's a perfectly acceptable uh, way to portray a character. Very lazy. I, I don't know why they can't just think up a new character type, you know? Like, uh, what about the, the, the lead character from Memento who had short-term memory problems and had to tattoo <laughs> clues all over his body? That's interesting. Right. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> why don't we use that character again? Yeah, well, <laughs> why isn't that cool? <laughs> Let's just get one more of those instead of another drunken has-been yeah. professional who's come back to save, salvage NASA or whatever. Agreed. Like, why can't we have... It's always like related cop. to science somehow as well, right? <laughs> like they're brilliant scientists. Well, okay, sure. But like, it's just like, it feels like it's somebody's like big wet dream sometimes, eh? When you're, when you're watching it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's I, I also weird. think that the, a lot of the people that write these are just fucking hacks. And it's much easier to just copy another character than it is to write a new one. Yeah. I, I would love to see the grizzled uh, veteran detective who has a terrible memory and has to constantly write the name of the suspect on his arm and then he gets confused because he's got all these old cases. Yeah. All right, looks like I'm going to catch the uh, the clown cap killer. No, uh, a detective uh, forgetful. We uh, we did that two years ago. Don't you remember? Here's a picture of us with him in handcuffs. Oh, yeah, right. All right, well, uh, what about this guy? You know, he's like going through <laughs> all the names on his arms every 10 minutes. He completely forgets the case, but by God, he's the best.
Yeah, it's I, I, I totally get this. Like, I do you think it's because people want to be able to put them like they I'm just an average idiot. Right. And, and that guy is saving the world. So maybe I could save the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you know? I think it is a bit of that, a bit of uh, projection. You can you can more easily. I mean, I also I guess it's sort of like uh, I guess it's it's kind of wish fulfillment to, to tell. I, I think it's kind of an insult to the audience to say, look, he's a slob like you. You know what I mean? And he's successful, so you and can be too. And he's done something. Yeah. yeah. He's a disgusting, but you don't have to change. scummy you slob could just, like you. You could just be a slob. Yeah. Right? And you'll still be, when you need to, you could just pull it out. You know? Oh, <laughs> you just fucking live like a shithead. And, you know, when don't worry, when panic strikes, you'll be fine. You know? Yeah. You'll be yeah. there to save you'll the day. You'll be fine. Yeah. You fucking yeah. disgusting slob. Yeah. By the way, buy some ah. more popcorn. Yeah, for like uh, for like six six bucks for a small bag of of popcorn. Like all they do is just heat up some kernels. Like there's I nothing always to buy it. it though. I, I same. I, I do buy it. It every yeah. time. I'm an idiot. As well. it's, me too. I, I I wonder how much that is true though. Like in a sense, because all these these these, I, it's quite cool to have a a drunk older guy who's like you know got a like kind of sad backstory you know his wife was me. killed oh my whatever, wife wasn't you know. killed but yes up to that point you know, wh- drunk older guy with a sad backstory i'll take that you that's know, me he's, he's <laughs> i don't know like it's quite i i don't mind that that i think like the whole john wick epitomizes it as well this that this was kind that of... was the worst character development of all time in his what, successful john wick. trilogy yeah his I've never even died. seen a. I've not. I've never seen a John Wick movie. I, well, I, I'm told that they're pretty entertaining, but I just if, haven't if, gotten around to watching one. Do you like action? Um, I mean, sometimes, yeah. So, like, I'll watch action. Every scene is like, what can John Wick do? That's like a semi-inventive way to kill someone in this scene. Right. And it gets it gets to the point. Like he, if you think if you think about most action movies that we grew up with in the 80s and 90s, I, I actually watched Terminator 2 the other day. Still a pretty good movie. Oh, Terminator 2 is a classic, man. Right. I love that movie. The, the good guys don't fucking cut people's heads off. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? In John Wick, he will butcher people. Like, he well, is so, a fucking animal. He will so do the John worst is, things. Look, th- he's a really cool guy, right? It's Keanu Reeves. He's a cool guy. He lives in a cool house. He's got a cool dog. He's, he's got a sad backstory. He's troubled. He's obviously... Uh, he was an ex-assassin or some shit. But the point of this, the, the, the movie is it's, it's a classic... Originally, it was a, cl- a rip-off of like these Korean revenge movies where, oh. you know, he would be... Someone would come along, break into his house and kill his dog. Yeah. And so he went on this... Rampage. Mad rampage. rampage, mad rampage, rampage to avenge yeah. the dog. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Oh, right. And and each sequel, they then have to f- come up with some e- even more bizarre reason why he has to go on this. All oh, right, rampage. so it's not always the dog. It's not like no, but that was no, what started. The, he, he went on his That's rampage. Started, he got yeah. home. He had a pizza. He drank like a, a glass of milk and just decided I'm still so fucking angry. And then like <laughs> just went even more ham. No, yeah, maybe just... someone like someone kicked his bin over or something. No, outside. He's got communicated from the uh, the assassin underworld it's sort of they've got this this big thing set up where all the assassins are like part of some sort of there's like a code that they It follow. sounds to me a bit like uh like the premise for falling down remember that with uh, Michael it's Douglas It's nothing like falling down <laughs> it's You like, haven't been listening if somebody, you think it's anything like falling no, down No no but it's like it's that idea that like it's like you know maybe I guess like somebody killing your dog you would probably want to go out and get some revenge or whatever but like it, it feels like so, so, like, you know, getting angry about, like, the, the straw that broke the camel's back sort of thing, right? Yeah, right. And, and that's yeah, your, that your tipping. Yeah, that is it. Right, right, I mean, right. It, it's yeah. not about the dog. It's about... It's the, about the, it's about uh, like just like a lot yeah. of stuff that's built up over time. Yeah, yeah, and then right. the dog, he decides the dog becomes like, the catalyst for him just going out. I need to do and, the right thing. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And kill all these mafia people. Yeah. And and so But, but yeah, he, 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 he he fights these guys in such a way that I I lost sympathy for him and you stop seeing him as a hero and it's literally just gun porn. And right. people really oh wow, look at that reload. That was a good reload that Ricciardo did there, you know, and all that yeah. kind of shit. And all, there are all these YouTube videos of him in training, and he's sure. like actually on a range shooting things and all the rest of it. It's just gun porn. Well, it's bizarrely sequels to The Matrix in a sense, right? A, 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 pure, a more pure sequel because 
not 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 a pure sequel, obviously, but but a, a spiritual successor in that, that we saw that character in the Matrix be this badass guy w- w- with guns, right. you know, going and doing these elaborate action scenes, you know, where he's spinning around, jumping on the ceiling, throwing a knife through someone's head across the room, kind of thing. Right. All of this sort of very it's it's no shaky cam. That's the other thing. John Wick is very clean. It is. It is well shot. Yeah. Clean action. You know, that's actually watchable because it was a time when. Oh. I would just skip through action stuff in TV and movies, like because it was all just everyone was shaky camming up and and bullshit, and it was it was it was unwatchable. It was, it was just the really worst bad. bit of a TV show. Yeah, it was incoherent. It's just it's just you're just watching kinetic energy on the screen, just thrashing, and this just noise, moving around because yeah. you can't see anything. And like, it's that, meant to make uh... it seem more real, but it was awful. What was that movie where the guy basically the whole movie was a guy had a GoPro on his helmet and he was like jumping between trains and like fighting people? That and started stuff? off as a YouTube video, didn't it? Where the guy uh, I was can't like, remember the name of it, but it, like I always thought it looked interesting, but apparently it's not not that. No, great. I think the full length film is 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 not going to be it. But um, yeah, I can't remember. There but is so a, the, there the is problem a, I have with John yeah. Wick is that he doesn't just shoot the baddies and they fall down like a normal stupid goofy action movie. He will then go over. And like shoot them in the head point blank, like every time. And it's like holy shit! Like there's no <laughs> there's no mercy with this guy. He's like the bad guy. If if this the bad guy did this, you think what a fucking asshole. That guy was down and out, and he just fucking finished him off. John Wick will go up and press the gun into your mouth, take the time <laughs> to reload, shoot you in the brains, shoot another guy in the knee, shoot the next guy in the face, and then grab the guy who's fallen to the ground and like blam, 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 blam in his face. Like, dude, what the fuck? Chill. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> That's too oh, much. Man. <laughs> too much. It is, it is, um, but I think that that's why it's successful, though, right? Because it is that that kind of thing is something that you you don't see in western cinema as much right that that even back in the day like the the spaghetti westerns from italy were a lot sort of darker and it wasn't until it was like dirty harry and stuff like this that was that they sort of replicated some of that um gritty darkness you know characters who were very just a and anti-hero you know a yeah. bad guy clearly well it's interesting um, you bring that up lewis because the Gosh. guy that made John Wick 3, which I think is called John Wick 3 Parabellum, I could be wrong, Wick fans, correct me in the comments, I'm so. sure you will. Um, there's a scene in it where he breaks in, he's being chased, because the call has gone up saying, it's, it's midnight, John Wick's, you know, he's a, he's a, you, you can kill him now and there's a big reward if you do. That's the setup for the whole movie. So... He's on the run. He's running. Suddenly, there's fucking assassins everywhere. His cab driver's an assassin. The guy playing the violin's an assassin. This beggar's an assassin. The guy at the McDonald's is a, an assassin. They're everywhere, and the, the, the <laughs> conceit is that there are assassins okay. coming out of the fucking world. How they, they the, the 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 market is saturated. It must be impossible to make a living. It's like Uber. They've basically done what Uber's done. There's drivers everywhere. They, it, there's less share to go around for the rest of them. So that's the the situation. The John Wick economy does not make sense. Anyway. He runs into this gun museum, locks the door. Rather than just keep on running, he cracks open the cases and starts putting together a gun. And he's like spinning the chamber and listening to the click and all the rest of it. I mean, why he managed to find some bullets in there, I don't know. But either way, he assembles this gun just to shoot one guy. And then he keeps running. And that whole scene was meant to be an homage to like this particular scene. You can look it up of uh, the guy who was like the, the fat, guy in uh, the good the bad and the ugly i can't remember his character's name oh the um, um yeah i can't remember his name either but the um not lee van cleef not no, Clint Eastwood, the, other, the other guy yeah right. the, where he the, goes into a gun store in the good, right the, bad, the, ugly, the ugly exactly yeah. he's the ugly he goes into the gun store and he like puts together a gun from different bits of guns and gets it just right it, it, that's an an homage to that now that scene has nothing to do whatsoever with John Wick. They just shoehorned it in because the guy liked it. That's John Wick in a nutshell. Is this not very, it doesn't make sense. It's just a series of action sequences with the shallowest of possible plots. And it's right. brutal. It's brutally gory and unnecessarily so. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I get the appeal. And you know what? I, honestly, sometimes I don't mind just watching something like that. You, I, th- I feel like for me, I just got to be in the mood, you know? like, Or if it's on TV and I'm just kind of like, sat there and uh, like i'll watch it sort of thing i don't know if i'd necessarily seek it out you know i don't know i just like um 
I say this a lot, but like, oh man, I just like documentaries. The older I get, the more I like them as well. <laughs> I just like, yeah. I just like, uh, I just like uh, learning about things that happened and reading about them afterwards and stuff too. I was I gonna watch a documentary about uh, this American football player, this Hawaiian American football player. Right. And uh, he's gonna be like the Heisman Trophy winner, and he's gonna go play for the NFL and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. then it turns out he he'd said his girlfriend had died. Right. Uh, but she didn't exist. Oh. Uh, that's the whole setup for, it's like a three or four part documentary. And Mrs. F was like, shall we watch that? And I was like, I don't know. It seems like a pretty weak Thin. start <laughs> to a series. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't really seem like such a shocking story that, I mean, it, it's no, it's no double LeBron James. You know what I mean? That's no, yeah. a story right there. Um, mm. This is literally, oh yeah, he invented a girlfriend, but then the story is, well, maybe it was another guy who was catfishing him and he'd only ever really met this girl online. That's pretty much it. That's the drama. And I'm like, this needed multiple episodes? This is like a <laughs> half hour show. Yeah. And you could sum it all up. Like, I read the, I read it off Wikipedia to me and Mrs. Ever. I read the Wikipedia. I was like, summed up. Job done. There was that ne other one. Um, there's the <laughs> other one on Netflix, which was... Which was similar, the one uh, that with the 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 girl who stayed at that hotel in uh, in L.A. and they oh yeah and they eventually yeah. she went missing and then they found her. Um, I felt like that one could have been probably just an episode, just an episode. Yeah, yeah. I felt. I mean, like they they did that one. Do you remember? Just it just dragged it yeah, out. Just like it was, it out. but it, it it is interesting. Like you know, I would have watched like you know an hour and a half documentary on that or whatever. Like right. the story itself was very interesting, but to, but do, to do, do you remember stretch we, we it out that, that far one. was too much. We watched that one where the guy was about it. accused of mm -hmm. murder. But he was at a baseball game, and Larry yeah, David that was, was filming. That Curve. was really interesting. But it was like See, a nice thirty-five-minute well job. Job done. Yes, you told yeah. the story. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. I don't That's need to hear from his like mailman. Hundreds you know? of random fucking people right. giving their fucking thing. Well, I think what happened to it was it was the aliens in the moon. Yeah, um, <laughs> and everyone's like, okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look, it was uh, uh, what I don't like is all the complete garbage speculation. You know, like, yeah. like fucking uh, like a Reddit thread of every fucking every dumb suggestion you could possibly well, imagine. Well, uh, on, no, on this on this thread, um, I started watching this uh, documentary. It's like it's a mini series about DB Cooper, and yeah. uh, that that's that's a one. <laughs> that's that that is that's one episode. Somebody does something really simple that nobody can figure out, and then it's it it seems like five episodes of people all coming out of the woodwork with their theories on who it could have been and how he could have done it right. and how he could have gotten away with it and did he even exist and uh, conspiracies and oh man it's, it's not I mean, there's, it's, there's not, so it's many nothing YouTube about, about it. db cooper like right. it, it's just it's all about the sort of uh, like I don't know, scene that developed around the, the micro him. economy that's formed around DBK. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a swarm of additional weirdos. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like uh, it's uh, an uh, interesting uh, thing. It's an interesting heist. But like, you gotta, you gotta remember the the time that that took place. I mean, they yeah. didn't even have metal detectors or anything. Like, yeah, that's primarily how drugs were smuggled into the country as well, right? People right. would just pack a suitcase full of them and, the and security just travel back then by air. <laughs> There's no you, security. You, you had to walk past customs and they just eyeballed you. Yes. If, they, if they didn't like the look of you, they were like, hold on a minute there, you look sweaty. It's like, yeah. huh? Yeah, they're on to me. <laughs> like, that's it. I mean, it's, it's crazy. But then, like, also, you know, at the time, it was this big, big deal or whatever. But you watch it now and you're like, okay, yeah, I mean, 200 grand is a lot of money. But, like, man, it's, it's not so much that you would spend that much time and energy trying to figure it out, you know? Like... <laughs> Yeah, like any any modern police department be like, well, you know, we haven't. It's been a week. We haven't solved it. <laughs> Guess we're just writing that <laughs> money oh, off. I'm sorry, Let's guys. Move on, guys. Yeah, you're not yeah. getting your money back, but we'll keep it on file. <laughs> we'll keep it on file. If anything else comes up, but yeah. we'll let you know. I don't. It's 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 just completely. Um, you know, like it's taken over some people's lives. You know, they they just yeah. like you know they go to like themed coffee shops around DB Cooper and stuff like that. It's, yeah, yeah. It's wild. It's it's nuts. If feels like one of those only in america things right like it's it's, it's, it's it is a crazy it is a story. bit eccentric 
and stuff. But I don't know. It's been it's been kind of fun. We've been we've just been watching it and just you know it's it's interesting enough. But uh, it's for anyone that doesn't want to watch the show but wants to know more about DB Cooper. There are like three or four really good YouTube vids about it. Um, where they sum it up very nicely and that's all you need it's like 20 minutes or whatever and, yeah. and job done like yeah. it doesn't need to be all those episodes no. but they need to they need content right yeah now what, like I keep saying is it must be cheaper to stick a bunch of older movies on there than to fucking crank out new ones yeah I would love there are tons of movies that I would love them to stick on there and they just don't no they just don't. I know I hate the, 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 the thing I hate as well is uh, when they do put movies on there They'll put like Terminator One, and you're like, "Oh shit, okay, cool." Terminator Three, where the fuck, where the fuck is Terminator Two? Where's like, two? it's the best Terminator. Like, Where's it's, two? it's not there. Yeah, <laughs> just they They're don't. Like, have oh, sorry, no, we didn't get that one. Yeah, it's like okay, also, you I'll know just what watch else I these hate? two other not so great Terminators uh, and try yeah. to remember how great Two was. Thank but you. But when a remake comes out, the even worse thing they do is put out the original. And you see it and you think, oh, the, the new Dune is up on so-and-so. And you look and it's like, oh, it's the old one. Yeah. Like, I've already seen that a hundred times. I don't need to see that again. I wanted to see the new one. Like I, they'll, they'll say like, oh, and, and they, well, we, here's the original that was made in 1932. If you want yeah. to see that, it's like, can you not try to get in on the coattails of this movie? Oh, yeah. It always makes me laugh is when Chernobyl was out. For us, we had to watch it on Now TV, right? right? The, the Chernobyl miniseries. If you went to any of the other streaming services, Prime, Netflix, or whatever, they had like Shadow of Chernobyl. Like, right. You know, it's like some other documentary Anything series. Anything Chernobyl related, they're chucking it Hoping that people would think that it was <laughs> the really good one that everybody else is talking about on the other streaming service that, and they, they would watch it. Even even down to the thumbnail looking kind of similar. Yeah, they stuff changed like the that. thumbnail for sure. For they sure. They love doing that, eh? Like It's so cheap. Like, yeah, you're, you're going to fool me for exactly two minutes. Yes. I'm not and paying then, uh, any more for this. It's not like you've tricked me into a movie theater, and now I'm like, oh, we may as well watch it. I can just yeah. press back and be annoyed. Like, you've just annoyed yeah. me. You've earned no more money. <laughs> I'm not like, well, hold on, honey. Don't cancel the Netflix subscription. There's something that kind of looks like Chernobyl on here. So <laughs> let's watch that. Oh, man. Yeah. It's uh, uh it, it it's an interesting one. I mean, I watched the the Chernobyl the 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 good one. Oh, it's so good. I didn't watch any of the other ones because once I feel like right. sometimes you watch something and it's so good that you're just like, I don't need to watch something else yeah. about this. This is fine for me. Like this has this has ticked all the boxes. I'm I'm good to move on, sort of thing. It's like when you find that one porn movie that you just that's it. That's the one. Yeah, this one's the one for me. I'm gonna I'm gonna save put this, this to loop. my external hard drive. <laughs> and <laughs> put it in my folder. That's the no. one, baby. We finally that's struck the, the one for me. That's all I need. I'm gonna <laughs> disappear into the countryside. <laughs> Honey, you can pack up and get the fuck out. Many I found years. it. I found it. Oh man, yep. I could be like that. I could be like the DB Cooper of porn collecting. You know, like uh, <laughs> this man found. The, the, the best holy grail porn. porn. He, he, he found he, the holy and grail. He jumped out of a plane and, and he's never been seen again. An airplane <laughs> and parachuted into the forest, never to be we seen again. We found traces of pornography stuck up on the trees. <laughs> we saw. It. We found a receipt for an external USB hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was aliens that gave him the porn. These fossilized tissue remains uh, reveal a trail oh, leading fuck. west. But, oh man! Jesus hey, um, listen. It's uh, I know that you guys have all done your vacations and stuff, but I'm going on one in like ten days. Mm. Oh, your first time away since uh, just before the start of COVID. Right. We have not left this rock in over two years, so everybody is pretty pretty hyped up. Where are you going? Uh, we're just going to England okay. for a week. Um, you swinging by Twickenham at any point? No, okay. no, we'll be nowhere near London or Twickenham, sadly. Okay. Um, but you know, it's um, England. It, 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 it it'll be good, but we do have a baby. Yeah, so it's like you hard. never know, right? Yeah. That's gonna be hard. She's it's good. Be like fun. she's fine. She sleeps and stuff. But all it takes is like one bad diarrhea or something, and you know that that can really just. Just get you, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it so can it's really. The same with me. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, a anything. Right. But... It's happen it can happen to us all. Yeah. Uh, and that's so that's so great, Sis. So I'm glad you're getting like a bit of um a bit a of little a, bit of a little bit of a, of a break. Holiday. Little yeah. little bit of a break. My uh, my my daughter's learning how to ride a bike. 
And uh, my son just got a, a new bike that he is uh, is good at riding. So my kids have been bike riding a lot this summer. That which, is very wholesome. Which is kind of nice too. Yeah, yeah. Remember riding a bike? Remember being excited to ride a bike? I yeah. do. Remember being I used happy? To, my my yeah. first bike was a red BMX with red tires. Mm. And I thought it was so cool because when I, because I didn't have a handlebar brakes, it had the the back pedal brakes. Mm, I hated that. I would I would slam those suckers on, and there would just be red streaks all over the road it's from a, my tires. Were, it was a nightmare. It was a way to pop your tires almost instantly. Yeah, I know. Wow. It was just like there was no Never did, though. gradual braking. It was just the sudden. <laughs> You're you're breaking and skidding. It was great. I loved it. They made him of different stuff back then. I was skidding all over the place and never never popped a tire. My ever. friends popped my tires and I never forgave them for it. Mm. It was pretty rough. Did you ever put uh, like baseball cards in your spokes and stuff at the back of your no, bike? No, we had spoky dokies. Um, oh, like the plastic things that like yeah. fell down the spokes. Yeah. So you 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 sort of uh, as you cycled, it went tickle 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 yeah, like that. Yeah, we yeah. had those. Did you have like uh, rainbow streamers on your handlebars and stuff too? We uh, s- some lads had the streamers, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, so my bike was a pedal backwards. It was a BMX, so that was the thing. Yeah. Um, it was. I mean, you know, it, it's actually pretty good because in a way, it means you you don't have brake cables in the way, which is a big thing if you if you're a hot BMXer. Uh, yeah. But unfortunately, there was a, a suspension bridge near us. It's called the it's called the suspension bridge. It's not a very fancy bridge, um, but it, it's a suspension bridge, and it's covered with you know what? This gives me massive Triforce deja vu. I am a hundred percent sure I've talked about this before. <laughs> but uh, I don't remember. It was it. like a sandpaper. It's not paper. ringing any bells with me. So well, well then obviously we've never spoken about it before. On oh the bridge, on the, the the sort of planks, they had uh, adhered a sandpaper like gripping surface that was like pebbles in glue right to stop people yes. this is this is coming back to me. Yes, that yeah. was the point where I remember when I described the surface. I thought, aha. I've talked about this before. And my friend cycled my BMX really fast, did the back pedal, and skidded like 20 feet and burst my back tire and had to carry it home. It might have even been this year that I told that story. So I do apologize, regular listeners. But I don't I don't know. There, I mean, I, I don't no, remember I, hearing I, this I story. Thought you were gonna, I thought you were going to get injured on the sandpaper. No, I was surface. not injured. No, he burst oh. my back tire with friction. But the bike was. Yeah, well, with pure friction. Fascinating. Jesus yeah. Christ. Fascinating stuff. That is it for today. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> this is me to ride. As you can tell, we've not done much except play Play Up and watch telly this week. Um, but I'm sure we'll have some more interesting stuff. Well, I'm next coming time. out of Bristol today, so we'll talk about that. Oh, next week. oh nice. Have, that next have a good trip. Week. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's not really much of a trip, is it? It's just kind of up the road for you, right? It's How two, long does it take you like to drive? Two from hours. Twickenham? It's two hours. Oh, but, two? Okay. But more Sorry, importantly, it's the friends that I get to see there. What um, uh, just uh, just out of interest when you're doing your two hour road trip up to Bristol? You got any uh, favorite stop offs? Uh, you got there's got to be like a roadside. I do like, not uh, stop. C- you don't. I do not stop. Not even a little chef or anything. Not at all. Come on, no, man. dude. I'm the classic dad. Once he gets going, that's it. This train oh, has no brakes. I am just. I going. fucking love. Stopping. You have to beg me to stop the car. If I see a rest stop, I, I'm even if I'm not hungry or thirsty, I'm going to check no it out. No way. I'm a no way. I'm, a stopper. I'm, a big I'm always. Stopper, I'm man. always saying, can we stop at the next one? Like every time. Every oh, time. Man, you know I'm what the never best is? either of you a fucking lift. I'm telling when you. When you're that, on man. the road in uh, in Canada, a lot of the rest stops, at least when I was uh, when I was younger, and we would do road trips either from uh, Ottawa to Montreal or occasionally from Ottawa to Toronto to like visit friends or whatever you had wendy's um usually it was like tim hortons wendy's sometimes like uh you know like pizza hut or kfc or something like that but wendy's oh man you go into wendy's and get a frosty and you just have a nice like chocolatey ice cream (laughs) milkshakey uh thing to eat in the car it was really nice refreshing like just just really good we stopped for lunch or fuel that's it right if it's lunchtime we're stopping we need fuel we're stopping but otherwise, we ain't stopping. You're stopping if someone okay, needs to Okay, but pee. if you stop for someone, fuel, someone needs you might pee. get a snack too, right? If like, I stop for petrol, of course, I'll come back with Haribo. I'll come back with with uh, with Tic Tacs. 
chewing gum Mentos. Normally not gum actually, because you got to then leave it in the car. Ben, so crisps, my, not crisps. My my brother crisps, was uh, get some crippins. Yeah, my brother was six years younger than uh, was and still is. He's he is six years younger than me. But yeah. you know, when I was like say eleven or or ten or whatever, and he was much smaller. Uh, I feel like I had a very typical North American upbringing in the sense that summer vacation normally involved driving, driving. somewhere very yeah, yeah. far. Yeah. So, you know, we'd be sitting in the back of the car with not much to do or whatever. My dad would stop somewhere and we'd get a Coke. And I remember my my brother would always get a bottle of Coke, a plastic bottle of Coke. But because he was so much smaller or whatever, if he had a snack with it or, or whatever, he would backwash so bad. And there would just be big chunks <laughs> wow. floating around in that bad boy. That's that disgusting. Is that. And Help. now I associate it so heavily with road trips now. Like if somebody even mentions road trip, all I see is a bottle of Coke with chunks floating around Oh, that's around disgusting. Oh, that's yeah, awful. it's yeah. brutal, eh? Like it's such a traumatizing thing Ugh. for me. Well, God, I think you need to get some therapy about that, dude. <laughs> well, yeah, I got a lot of unpacking to and do, And now I, I do too. Now I've got Sorry. to actually pack and get dressed and, and get down there. So we better call this. All right. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Um, <laughs> we'll leave you, leave you with that. Yeah. Uh, we Enjoy. Love you. Merry and Christmas. See you, see you soon. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye.